Mr. Magaziner for his line of questioning. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, there's a lot we could touch on here, but I want to focus my initial questions on the issue of IP theft. Um, there's obviously a national security imperative that we protect the intellectual property and trade secrets of uh, our defense um, industry and, and related industries. But there's also an economic imperative that we protect American companies and American jobs from intellectual property theft. Uh, when uh, an American manufacturer or uh, an American agricultural firm has their intellectual property stolen, that ultimately costs American jobs. And so uh, I'll start with um, Mr. Uh, Kahangama. Um, the 2023 Quadrennial Homeland Security Review warns that the CCP is seeking to acquire our intellectual property and sponsoring a relentless barrage of cyber attacks that threaten our competitiveness. Can you describe for us how DHS is working with industry partners and other federal agencies to shore up our vulnerabilities and guard against the theft of intellectual property? Absolutely, thank you for that uh, question, ranking member. Uh, this is an utmost priority for the department. Uh, a lot of our efforts are led through the uh, Homeland Security Investigations Intellectual Property Rights Center, the IPR Center, and that is an interagency collaboration center where we are able to have industry come in, provide them threat briefings, conduct information sharing, and otherwise uh, provide uh, uh, specific threat information to some of these targeted entities. I think the cybersecurity angle is very important as well. Our cybersecurity and infrastructure security agency is actively working on addressing specific PRC cyber threats because the, the best indicator of uh, what is gonna be stolen is what's already been exploited. And so we've done things like publish lists of known vulnerabilities that the PRC has already exploited and push that information out so that industries uh, sensitive technology holders and others can patch those holes and otherwise protect themselves. Uh, we've also conducted a wide array of uh, briefings, both classified and unclassified, to uh, share this threat with them and continue to engage in real-time information sharing. Thank you, and I'll, I'll ask a similar question to Ms. Murphy. Can you talk about what the FBI is doing, again, with other federal agencies and with private sector partners to help protect American intellectual property and in so doing, protect American jobs. Absolutely, this is a top priority for me and for the FBI. Um, th there's a lot of obviously nuance to this threat um, and different layers. And so let's start with the innovation in emerging tech society. Um, we've learned through interactions that venture capitalists are the best at d identifying the tech that is gonna actually succeed because their money depends upon it. And so we've done extensive outreach, especially in the San Francisco area with venture capitalists to try and identify what that tech is to help protect that. But we also know through our outreach that smaller uh, entrepreneurs don't have the money to invest in protecting their intellectual property or in cybersecurity. Um, so we've done a lot of outreach in that space to try and educate people about intellectual property and that those efforts are ongoing. When we talk about delivering uncompromised technology to our warfighters, um, when there's places like AFWorks or AFC that's doing outreach to the emerging tech space, we work closely with them to try and protect the technologies that they're bringing in from principal research um, all the way through into classified space in their labs. So it's a space that we're very focused on and we're doing a lot of outreach on and I think that will continue and grow. Thank you. And just one more question on this topic for, for uh, uh, any of you. If there are people watching this hearing from home, you know, who may own a business or run a business or, you know, run a, you know, a local utility or other piece of critical infrastructure, uh, what can you do for them? Like, what are the resources for the people who are watching at home who want to know what their vulnerabilities are, who want to know how to protect themselves? Can they reach out to DHS? Can they reach out to the FBI? And, and what services can you offer to help them protect themselves? I think both agencies, I'll pass it over to Aranga, but I think both agencies offer different tools um, to help depending on the range of what they're looking at, whether it's from cybersecurity, educational and protecting intellectual property, insider threat. I think both agencies have tools and I would encourage them to reach out. Thank you, if I could just follow up. Uh, CISA specifically at CISA.gov, their website has actual free services that cost nothing that small and, small and medium businesses can download and utilize to effectively scan their systems and understand the threat picture. Uh, they can also reach out to, uh, to CISA for a little bit more uh, specific and in-depth uh, 
uh, vulnerability assessments, but there are a number of free tools on our website. Thank you. And, and for those watching at home, CISA is the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, CISA. So we encourage everybody to uh, take advantage of those services. And I yield back. Gentlemen, uh, as time has expired, the chair now recognizes